TV showing unity, bringing forth mysteries of it with light history, showing and proving who we are biblically, sports and four philosophies, keeping our eyes on the prophecies. Magic Beast TV showing unity, bringing forth mysteries of it with light history, showing and proving who we are biblically, sports and four philosophies, keeping our eyes on the prophecies. Children of Israel standing firm, we go hard, proving all things through the spirit of the Most High. Yeah. Israelites bringing light to the truth in the midst of lies, uh -huh. being examples to the youth so we utilize anything we get our hands on to open your eyes of course we get our read on you can get edified on history the israelite mystery discovered through scriptures for many centuries the proof is evident through the archaeology old books and testimonies of our ancient family trees can't do nothing against the truth but only for it the white man said we africans we fell for it the white man said we hispanics the fact is we the real jews and we the chosen on this planet our people need to wake up stop the madness this unification ain't embracing the real mission Mac and Beast TV showing unity bringing forth mysteries of Israelite -like history showing and proving who we are biblically sports and false philosophies keeping our eyes on the prophecies Mac and Beast TV showing unity bringing forth mysteries of Israelite -like history showing and proving who we are biblically sports and false philosophies keeping our eyes on the prophecies Shalom, shalom, shalom. <clears throat> Welcome to another edition of Maccabees TV. Sh now showing on my channel, Priest Daniel Allah, Uncut. Today's topic that we're going to discuss, or the name of today's lesson, is how to detect and dissect a wolf in shepherd's clothing, volume one. Again, how to detect and dissect a wolf in shepherd's clothing, volume number one why is this only volume number one because i'm pretty sure there'll be other volumes to follow when people say stupid stuff like the stuff we're going to see that came out the mouth of a so-called pastor right um as usual we're going to start off with a scripture saint john chapter 8 verse 32 it says and ye shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free so knowing the truth, which pursuant to the book of St. John, chapter 17, verse 17, is the word, the words of the Most High is the truth. The law of the Most High is the truth. You shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. And so when we found out the truth of what this Bible was really talking about, when we found out the truth of who we really were, when we found out the truth of why we're in a condition that we're in, all of which is attached to us transgressing the Most High's laws, and violating the covenant that the Most High made with our fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. When we found out the truth of that, now we are free from sin. Now we are free mentally and spiritually so that we can return to our father so that the Most High can peradventure deliver us out of this captivity, which is the worst captivity we've ever been in, because this is the only captivity where the children of Israel did not know who they were, that the Most High can deliver us. All right. So knowing the truth makes you free. Let's move on to the next slide. Now, this is what I call the devil being the devil. I'm going to play this video for you, and I'm going to let you see for yourself. Okay? Check it out. All right, family. So, this guy right here, his name is Pastor Stephen Anderson. He's from Arizona. So, this video has been floating around online for the last few days, maybe even weeks. And um, I've seen a lot of camps do commentaries on this, but I wanted to do one myself as well. I want you to pay attention to everything that this guy is saying is I'm going to give commentary as he's speaking and I'm going to follow it up 
with a PowerPoint presentation as well. Now, in this video, this guy contradicts himself, a glaring contradiction. All right, I'm going to show y'all that. So pay attention now. All right, here we go. Hey everybody, Pastor Steven Anderson here from Faithful Word Baptist Church in Tempe, Arizona. I just wanted to make a quick video rebuking the stupidity of the black Hebrew Israelites. And this movement is something that you'll see a lot on YouTube, Facebook, different places, where they're constantly piping up with just the most ridiculous, foolish arguments. Uh, they really just prey on people's ignorance. And, you know, anybody who's following them, I'm sorry, but is, is not very smart. They just assume that people haven't read the Bible, so they cherry pick strange verses out of context. And their whole point is to try to prove that Jesus was black and that black people are the true Jews and so forth. Now, let me just start out by saying this. I have nothing against black people. I Anytime a white person says they have nothing against black people, it's usually the opposite. There's an old saying, and it goes something like this. What's understood doesn't need to be said. If you were simply making this video out of just wanting to correct us because we're teaching wrong doctrine, then you would do just that. You would have no need to tell us that you have nothing against black people. But I, with my eyes being wide open, anytime a so-called white person starts off by telling me they have no problem with black people, I know that they do. Their track record proves it. But I digress. Let's continue. Love black people. In fact, you know, when I went to Bible college outside of Chicago, I actually chose to work in the black ministry. So I spent two and a half years ministering in South Chicago every Saturday and Sunday, preaching and reaching black people with the gospel of Jesus Christ in an area. Uh, you weren't teaching them no gospel of Jesus Christ. You were teaching them the gospel of Cesar Borgias or Cesare Borgia. You can take your pick of the uh, pronunciation of his name which was the second son of Pope Alexander VI of Rome, which is the image of Jesus Christ that has been on the earth for the last 500 years, pushed by Europeans on all the dark nations. That's who you were teaching our people about in Chicago. You were not teaching about the Christ of the Bible, whose name is Yahweh Shai, who was so dark, he looked like he burned in the furnace. You were definitely not teaching them the real Jesus Christ. Yeah, that was pretty much 100% black. And if you've ever been to Chicago, it's very segregated. And so the neighborhood that I was in, Inglewood, which was uh, around the intersection of 67th and Halstead, that whole area where I went soul winning, you know, you never hardly even saw a, a, another white person. I mean, everybody was black. And I chose that ministry, and I was able to win many hundreds of black people unto the Lord. And I enjoyed uh, spending time with them, getting to know them, reaching them with the gospel. So this isn't about me being a racist. And well, but it is about you being a racist. And I'm going to tell you why it's about you being a racist. Because before there was such a thing as a black Hebrew Israelite that you knew about, because we've been around since the 1800s. But before you knew about the black Hebrew Israelites, as far as you knew, all the images of Christ were white. Right. On your Sunday school book, the image of Christ is white. On the fans in your church, the image of Christ is white. On the pulpit, on the walls, everywhere you look, you see the white image of Jesus Christ. In the Bibles that you give to the little children, you have Christ portrayed as a white man. Never, never, never did you make a video and say that that was wrong. Never, never, never did you make a video and say Christ should not be portrayed as a white man. You were fine with that. What makes you a racist is the fact that now that you see black people portraying Christ a, in the image that the Bible says he should be, which is dark skin, and B, in the image of black people themselves, now that you see that going on, now you got to make a video. So you are a racist. Who are you fooling? And, and frankly, it doesn't matter to me what color Jesus is, because if Jesus were... No, it didn't matter to you what color Jesus was when he was being portrayed as white. That's why you didn't have any videos about it. It matters now because black people are portraying him being dark skin, which is biblical. But anyway, black, that wouldn't bother me at all. And I would worship him just as much, except that the simple fact is that Jesus was not a black man. And so therefore, that's a lie. And so I'm going to rebuke it as such. And the fact that a certain segment of black people known as the black Hebrew Israelites want to make such a big deal about turning Jesus into a black man. So you purport that we, the black Hebrew Israelites, turned Jesus into being black. That's interesting. 
because the black Israelite movement, which is no such thing as a black Israelite, they're only the Israelites, and the Israelites are so-called blacks and Hispanics. We are the Israelites. But this movement in America, I'm talking about in America, started in the 1800s, in the 1800s. So from the 1800s on up, you're saying that we, the black Israelite movement, turned Christ into being black. We're going to see if that stands up to scrutiny shortly. Let's continue. Which is contrary to scripture, contrary to history, contrary to common sense. So you, know, you say that Christ being portrayed as a black man is contrary to scripture. We're going to deal with that. You say that Christ being portrayed as a black man is contrary to history. This is what you say. We're going to see if that stands up to scrutiny. I hope you are ready to eat your words. Don't worry. I'm going to season them very well as I'm shoving them back down your throat. Okay? But let's continue. This just shows that they are narcissistic, where they demand that God be made in their image. Instead of just accepting the truth of the God of the Bible, they want to form and fashion a God in their own image. And they basically refuse to worship God unless God's black. You know, I don't expect God to look exactly like me. And I don't believe that Jesus Christ was a Caucasian. Stop. Did y'all hear what he said? I hope you heard what he said right there. He said he does not believe Jesus is Caucasian. Now, let's see if he's consistent throughout the rest of the video with that thought process. Let's continue. He was from the Middle East. And if you look at people who live in that region, they are a light brown and the reason why the people in the Middle East today are light brown is because of the Ottoman Turks. So obviously you failed history class, but that's for another show at another time. But you don't know what you're talking about. But let's continue. Complexion. And so that's probably what Jesus looked like when he walked on this earth. I'm not saying he was a Caucasian or a Scandinavian. OK, so you said that you're not saying that Christ is Caucasian. That's twice you said that now. Let's continue. But he certainly was not black. He certainly was not looking Nigerian or looking Ethiopian or as someone from sub-Saharan Africa. That doctrine is, is foolish and ridiculous. Now, the scriptures that the black Hebrew Israelites will try to twist are often scriptures from Jeremiah or Lamentations where it talks about people who are starving to death and so their skin becomes blackened as a result of starvation. So white people, when they starve, become black. Hmm. You know what they call that? They call that weird science. That's what they call that, because that's some BS. Well, they'll just take these verses out of context and show them to the ignorant fools who follow them as, see, look, it says these people were black. Another really common uh, scripture that they'll use is Revelation chapter 1, where it talks about John on the Isle of Patmos looking at Jesus in his glorified form, where it says that Jesus, his head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow. That's a pretty clear verse. His head and his hairs, not just his hair. The, they, they read that as, oh, he had white hair. No, 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 that's not what it says. His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow. The way that they interpret that is, oh, he had woolly hair. He's a black man. So these people. And that's the right interpretation, as we're going to see a little bit later. That's the right interpretation, 100% are so deluded and they twist scripture so much they can look at a verse that says white as snow and get black out of that how do you get black out of white as snow and here's what they'll say well it says that he had woolly hair so therefore he's black his hair is like wool no it does not say his hair is like wool no it does not say woolly hair it says that his head and his hairs were white like wool. It doesn't say that they were like wool in this in their texture. It says that they were the color of white wool. And then it even explains further by saying white as snow. Okay. So that image of Jesus obviously glowing in brightness and resplendency, he's described as being white. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Didn't you just say like two minutes ago that you're not saying that Christ is white? Now you describe in Revelation the first chapter and you're saying that Christ is being described as white. The face of a devil right there in front of you, ladies and gentlemen. This man is a devil, a deceiver. One hundred percent. You heard it right out of his own mouth. First, he said Christ was not black, white. Now he's saying in Revelation, Christ is being described as white. <laughs> 
man. Okay, not black, white. Mm. Not only that, but if you were to look back in the Song of Solomon, for example, oh, which Solomon is the... We got to stop you right there. So you done with Revelations now? You don't go on to read the next verse where it describes his feet as being so dark, he looked like he was burned in a furnace. You're just going to stop right there? Who were you fooling? I thought we were the ones that were fooling people with the scriptures. Oh, my God. Man. Man. Ancestor of Jesus Christ. Solomon was definitely a Jew. He was a Hebrew. He was of the tribe of Judah and so forth. The Bible says in Song of Solomon, chapter 5, verse 10, describing King Solomon, it says, My beloved is white and ruddy, the chiefest among 10,000. So right there in Song of Solomon, chapter 5, verse 10, it describes Solomon as being white. Okay, it Wait a minute. Wait a minute. So now I have, I have to stop you here, too. So you're starting with Songs of Solomon, chapter 5, but you didn't start with Solomon, Songs of Solomon, chapter 1. Hmm. You jump right to five. Very interesting. Very, very interesting. Let's dissect this devil once and for all. Let's do it. All right. So now let's read the scripture really quickly. This is the book of Second Thessalonians, chapter two, verses six through eight. And ye, and now ye know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time for the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out the way. Verse number eight. And then shall that wicked be revealed whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Right now, this kingdom, America, this world is being destroyed by the spirit of the Most High's mouth through his prophets, through his teachers, through his men. And this word is going out through all the world. And these so-called white scholars and white theologians and the white power structure in general, they see it and they're fearful of that. They're fearful of it. So now they're putting out disinformation to try to so-called debunk what it is that we're saying. See, there's a process to this whole thing. The most I said they're going to be consumed first with the spirit of his mouth. This word is going to go all throughout the world and it's going to tear down strongholds and tear down lies and all that stuff. And these nations see it and they know it and they're trying to stop it. And the ultimately, ultimately, when they cannot stop this word from coming out, when they cannot debunk us, that's when they're going to try to get physical with us. And that's when Christ is going to come and destroy this place pursuant to the scriptures. Let's move on. Who are the judges of the earth? Let's read the book of Job, chapter 9, verse 24. It says the earth is given into the hands of the wicked. Now, when we look over the earth today, we see who's controlling the earth, who's putting embargoes on people, who's sending their military into everybody's land, who's telling what countries they can have nuclear weapons and which countries can have nuclear weapons, so forth and so on. The so-called white man is controlling the earth. Okay, The earth is given into the hands of the wicked, so he is the wicked. He covereth the faces of the judges thereof. If not, where and who is he? So who are the judges of the earth? The judges of the earth are the Israelites. You prove that by reading Exodus chapter 18, verses 24 to 26. So Moses hearkened to the voice of his father-in-law and did all that he had said. And Moses chose able men out of all of Israel and made them heads of the, over the people, rulers of thousands, rulers of hundreds, rulers of fifties, and rulers of tens, and they judged the people at all seasons. The hard causes they brought unto Moses, but every small matter they judged themselves. So this is scripture right here is a cut for people that say only God could judge me. That's not scriptural. The Most High set up judges on the earth. And if you transgress against the Most High's laws, the Most High didn't come off his throne to judge you. Men on the earth judged you. So the Most High set up the Israelites to be the judges. When you read in the New Testament, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 2, it tells you that the saints shall judge the world. Who are the saints? When you read Psalms 148 and 14, and when you read Psalms chapter 50, verse 5, the saints are the Israelites. So clearly, there's a connection between the Old Testament and the New Testament in terms of who are the judges. The judges are the Israelites. Now, back to Job verse 9, 9 verse 24 again. He, talking about the wicked, covereth the faces of the judges thereof. This happened during the Renaissance. All the images of the black saints 
the Israelites, the kings, the queens, everything. When a so-called white man came into power during the Renaissance, he destroyed all that art and put his face up and said he's the people. And is now running around the earth telling us that we turn in Christ black. Well, I got news for you. Christ has always been black. You so-called white people during the Renaissance, you turned him white. OK, let's go to the next slide. Now, I mentioned the word iconoclasm. So this is a good uh, I don't really deal with Wikipedia a lot. But in this particular PowerPoint, I have a couple of things from Wikipedia because this is pretty much general knowledge. You can find this anywhere. And this is you know, this is true. So I don't mind. Um, it says iconoclasm. All right. To the left of your screen, it said iconoclasm is the destruction of religious icons and other images or monuments for religious or political motives. That's all I'm going to read. So there was destruction of religious items and icons that went on, and that word is called iconoclasm. If you look to the right, you can see that that's an image from Wikipedia of somebody whitewashing an image. You can clearly see that, right? That's iconoclasm. All right, let's move on. So now we're going to go back over this video. I want to focus on three particular portions of that video that we just watched. The first portion of the video is this one right here. This so-called pastor says that we, the black Israelites, we turned Jesus white. So let's let's hear. And the fact that a certain segment of black people known as the black Hebrew Israelites want to make such a big deal about turning Jesus into a black man, which is contrary to scripture, contrary to history, or contrary to history, or contrary to history, or contrary to history, or contrary to history, contrary to common sense. So he says that us turning Jesus black is contrary to history. So that's what we're going to focus on first. We're going to focus on history. All right. Now, I have on my screen a book called The Catacombs by James Stevenson. Now, the picture that's on your screen, that is the uh, paperback version. I happen to have a hard copy. So if you go out and you get this book, the corresponding pages that I call in this video may not correspond if you have the paperback version, but pretty much the images of both books are the same. So that's that's the point. OK, right. let's move I on. I want to read this article right here. It's called The Catacombs of Rome from Wikipedia. Right. I want the second paragraph because I find something very interesting here. Right. It says the Christian catacombs are extremely important for the art history of early Christian art as they contain the great majority of examples from before about 400 A.D. Before 400 A.D. So way before there was ever such a thing as a black Hebrew Israelite, you had the Christian catacombs and in the Christian catacombs, you had Christian art. Art depicting the people of the Bible in fresco and sculpture, as well as gold glass medallions. OK, so that, that's that's all I pretty much um, wanted to read, because that's it right there before 400 A.D. Right now. OK, so according to the pastor, and I use that word loosely, right, we turned the people in the Bible, we turned them black. So now we're looking inside this book called the catacombs. We're looking at it here. I want to zoom in a little bit. Now, you see what's on the screen, right? But before we get to what's on the screen, I want to zoom in a little bit so we could be clear that I'm not making this up. I didn't write this book. And I'm not making this up. This book was put together by white scholars. Hmm. Interesting. Let's zoom in just a little bit and let's see what we see here. So I'm going to take you over here uh, to the caption right here in the corner. You see this right here? Figure 53 is Job. Job from the Bible. Job. That Job. OK. Now, if you scroll up, figure 52 is the figure up here. That's figure 52. So figure 53 here. Also here is on the corresponding page. Let's read what it says. It says Job appears about a dozen times in catacomb paintings, old paintings, like 2000 year old paintings. 
he usually is solitary. He usually is a solitary and seated figure. But sometimes his wife is also shown. So now let's zoom back out. Right? Let's zoom back out. And what do we see here? We see a seated figure on the right with an afro, a black face, black hands, black legs, black feet, and a white garment. And he's seated. And figure 53 on a corresponding page tells you that is Job from the catacombs. You see that? He said, we are turning these people in the Bible black. But the historical icons are showing, no, they've always been portrayed as black. Why would the Christians in the catacombs have any black paintings of Job? I thought we were the ones that made that up. You see how the white man is the devil? Do you see? Is that not clear? That's pretty clear to me. But I have more. There's more. Listen, there's a lot of this stuff in this book. A lot, a lot, a lot. Okay? He said there's no history on this. Well, I don't know how I came up with it then. Anyway. Let's continue to look. There's another one. There's another one right here. Let's zoom in just a little bit. See that right there? It says Peter and Marcel uh, Marcel Marcellinius, the multiplication of loaves. Okay, so this is talking about Christ, right? And the multiplication, the miracle he had where he multiplied and turned the loaves. Now, obviously, this is an image then of an Israelite. Hmm. With an afro and dark skin and dark hands and dark feet, again, wearing a white garment. This is from the catacombs. What are these dark images doing down there in the catacombs? What are they doing? Well, the answer is really simple. It's because the people, the Christians that were down there, they knew who these people were. They knew that these people were black. They had no problem with it. They had no problem with it whatsoever. So this is clear historical facts. Let's continue. Now we're moving on to Duryaropus. Duryaropus was founded in 303 BC by the Seleucids. There is a synagogue that has been found excavated and the contents of it are in the National Museum of Syria. So what they found in the synagogue at Duryaropus that was built in 303 BC, they moved it to the National Museum. Museum of Syria. Here lies some of the most ancient depictions of the patriarchs of the Bible that have ever been found. They were found at Dura Europus. This is a picture from one angle of what they excavated from Dura Europus at the National Museum in Syria. This is just from one angle. So you look at that and it doesn't really... You know, the, the picture's kind of far away. You can hardly make out some of the stuff. So it doesn't really do anything for you. So then you go and look at it from another angle and boom. What do you see? What do you see? Well, let me show you what I see. Y'all see right here where my arrow is? You see right there? You see right there? <laughs> you see down here? That's Moses. You see right here? This is Moses and Aaron and scenes from the Exodus that was excavated from Dura Europus that was built in 303 BC. And when they found that synagogue and excavated, this is what they found on the walls. Ancient depictions of Moses and the Israelites leaving Egypt and they're black. But I thought the black Israelites made this stuff up. Made it up. That's what you say. But apparently not. Apparently, this stuff has been around way longer than there's been anything that was been called a black Hebrew Israelite. You, you, man. Now, I know you see some of the light images down here, man. A lot of this stuff is iconoclasm. They destroyed a lot of it. But you know what? I'm not even here to argue whether that's true or not. The fact of the matter is, my argument is that we're supposed to have made up the black images of all these people, but we're finding some ancient ones right here. Even if these are accurate, which they're not, but even if they were accurate, are you saying that these are not accurate? Is that what you're saying? But let's look at it a little closer. Now you get up a little closer on it, and now you can really see it. Now tell me that they're not black. Now tell me that these people are not black. On the left, you see Moses and Aaron. This is Moses right here. Okay? These right here, 
You know who this is? This is the hands of God and they're black. Y'all don't see that? This is the Egyptian army drowning in the Red Sea. Black. Let me go back one slide so you can see. I'm not making it up. You can see right here. See the hands of God? I know it's kind of hard to see. It's a little blurry. See the hands of God right there? It's the same image, but the, this picture right here was taken where you couldn't really make it out. The person was probably far away. Because a lot of times the white folks that come and take these pictures, they don't want to put themselves for black people to see. It's the same images. You can see the hands of God. You can see the Egyptian army, so forth and so on. But when you get up closer on it, boom. So now if we're taking the Bible out of context, what were the people of Dura Europas doing? What were they doing? See that? Let's move on. Have you ever heard of Professor Michael Grant? Professor Michael Grant used the image from Dura Europas on the cover of his book called The History of Ancient Israel. He didn't use the other images, the Renaissance images. He used this image, which gives it an air of authenticity because this guy is a well-known professor in the studies in this area. He wrote a great book called Imperial Rome, The History of Ancient Israel, and many others. He's considered a top scholar. And he put black images on the front of his book to depict Moses and Aaron leading the children of Israel out of Egypt. What are you going to... Man, let me just move on. <laughs> okay. When our people started waking up to the fact they changed the book cover. Fast! Y'all see the difference? The original book cover had black Hebrew Israelites. It's like they call us black Israelites. It had black people on the cover of the book. Now... They have Renaissance art on the cover of the book and got rid of the black images. Why? Why? Where is images like this at Dury Europas? Where, where are they? Hmm? So let's move on. Now, this is from PBS. Now, I know, um, unfortunately, I'm using a free version of the screen recording because my real version is kind of acting up right now, family, so please excuse me. I know this thing is kind of obscuring your view, but this is the same image we saw from Dury Europas. I find it interesting, right, that um, PBS, when they made an image of, when they used an image or an ancient image of Moses and Israelites, they're using the same image from Dury Europas, right? They're using the same exact image from Dury Europas. This is a real image. And these, they're black. We already went through this. This is, this is um, already established fact. Now watch this. Same website. Look at, the, look at the top. Look at the address bar. Same website, right? Now they show us the picture from Dury Europas and they date this particular image to 245 AD. Now although Dury Europas was built in 303 BC, doesn't necessarily mean that all the art in there is that old. So they're saying that this particular image is from around 245 AD, which still makes it like 1800 years old, 1800 years old. OK, so this is from 245 AD and this is from the 1600s. This is supposed to be Moses, too. So how can this be Moses and this be Moses? One of them is not real. One of them is fake. So-called Pastor Anderson wants you to believe that this is real. And this is fake. You see that? He said that there's no history whatsoever to prove that these people are black. Why am I finding it? Why am I finding it everywhere? Let's continue. See this guy right here? Richard McBee. I don't know who the hell he is. They say he's a painter and a writer of Jewish art. That's what this says right here. Just randomly ran across this. He has a blog online. So he's talking about ancient art. Ancient Jewish art. And what images is he using to depict ancient Jewish art? The black ones. The black ones. Y'all see that? Y'all see that? So how is it that this guy knows that, but Pastor Anderson, you don't know that? Come on, man. This is a joke. This is a joke. Here's another image from Dury Europas. You have priests performing a sacrifice, and they're all black. All of them. Okay. You try to destroy these right here. You try to destroy them, but you weren't completely successful. And you didn't get a chance to destroy this, 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 his hands, his face, his legs, all that. Black. 
ancient art, black, but we're making it up. Let's move on. The name of this book is called, I went over this before, the name of this book is called Early Spanish Manuscript Illuminations. You can get this book on your own. I've gone over it in other videos. If you want to know more about this book, you can actually uh, check out some of my other videos. I actually opened the book up and showed y'all some stuff. I'm just going to tell you, and you can fact check me later. This on the cover, that's Christ in the center, and he's on either side of him are two angels, and above him are two angels. That's what that is on the cover of that book. You can get that book. It's very cheap. You can get it online on Amazon and check into it for yourself. That's Christ. That image is from a folio that is inside the Leon Bible, which if I'm not mistaken, and I'm winging it, the Leon Bible came out of sometime around 945 AD or 965 AD, well over a thousand years ago. Well over a thousand years ago. And that image of Christ and the angels was inside that Bible. And they're black. Hell, they're very dark. But I thought the so-called pastor said that we were making all this stuff up. There's no history to support any of this stuff. No, you're just you just be lying, man. You just be lying. That's all that is. Now let's continue. Let's move on. Let's get to the next part of the video that we want to address. Watch this. Another really common uh, scripture that they'll use is Revelation chapter one, where it talks about John on the Isle of Patmos looking at Jesus in his glorified form, where it says that Jesus, his head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow. That's a pretty clear verse. His head and his hairs, not just his hair. The, the, they read that as, oh, he had white hair. No, 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 that's not what it says. His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow. The way that they interpret that is, oh, he had woolly hair. He's a black man. So these people are so deluded and they twist scripture so much, they can look at a verse that says white as snow and get black out of that. How do you get black out of white as snow? And here's what they'll say. Well, it says that he had woolly hair, so therefore he's black. His hair is like wool. No, it does not say his hair is like wool. No, it does not say woolly hair. It says that his head and his hairs were white like wool. It doesn't say that they were like wool in, this, in their texture. All right. Just a whole bunch of mumble jumble and BS. All right. Let's read Revelation chapter 1 verses 12 through 15. And I turned to see the voice that spake with me. And being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. Now I'm going to give you guys this breakdown the way that we give it to our people. Verse 13. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the son of man, clothed with a garment down to the foot and girt about the paps with a golden girdle. So Christ's garment went all the way down to his feet. OK, verse number 14, his head and his hairs were white like wool. I want to focus on that word head and I want to focus on that word hairs. Those two words, head and hairs, because we're going to come to those two words in the next slide. His head. And his hairs were white like wool. The hair on his head and the hairs of his beard were white. And the texture of it was woolly, as white as snow, meaning fully gray. Okay? And his eyes were as a flame of fire. And his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace. Now we have to stop here and we have to think. We have to use critical thinking just for a second. First of all, it said Christ's feet were so dark, they looked like brass that was taken in the oven and burned. If anyone walking the earth has a white face, but feet the color of Wesley Snipes, that man is sick. Rush him to the nearest emergency room as soon as possible. He needs to see a doctor. There's no way you walking around looking like daggone George W. Bush and walking around with your feet looking like Wesley Snipes. There's no way. That's BS. That's why in that video previously, just now, you notice he stopped at verse 14, never read verse 15 for a reason. OK, Christ's feet was so dark, looked like they was burned in the furnace. If his feet was black, so was the rest of his body. Let's. Let's be real here, man. Let's be real. 
Okay. By the way, I have the word brass there starred because brass is not an ancient alloy. It should really be like copper or something like that. Brass is something that came around later on in history. Okay. But it, the understanding is the same. If you look at copper, like a penny is copper. So you can say that Christ was so dark, he looked like a piece of copper that was taken in the oven and burned. Okay, let's move on to the next uh, slide. Now, wool is referring to the texture, not the color. So again, let's look at this. This is Revelation chapter 1, verse 14. His head and his ears were white like wool. Head, ears, like wool. Let's go to the book of Daniel chapter 7, verse 9. Let's read that. It says, and I beheld till the thrones were cast down and the ancient of days did sit whose garment was white as snow. So Daniel was having a vision and what he saw was he saw a vision of what he perceived to be the most high sitting on his throne. The ancient of days is the most high. He who was before days were created the most high. And he said the most high had on a garment that was white as snow and the hair of his head. There's that word hair. And there's that word head again. The hair of his head like the pure wool. The hair of the Most High's head when Daniel had a vision of him was like pure wool. Are you going to now tell me that this is not talking about texture either? It says pure wool. So it's definitely talking about texture. So what is the point? The point is, is that when you see the analogy to wool in the scriptures, it's not using the analogy to tell you about the color of the hair because there's many, many, many things that John could have used that were white in existence to describe the color of Christ's hair, but he or he referred to wool. Why? Because wool in the scriptures is giving you the texture. We clearly see that in Daniel chapter 7, verse 9. The understanding is the same in Revelation chapter 1, verse 14. It's no different. The texture is the wool is talking about the texture, period. All right, let's move on. Not only that, but if you were to look back in the Song of Solomon, for example, which Solomon is the ancestor of Jesus Christ. Solomon was definitely a Jew. He was a Hebrew. He was of the tribe of Judah and so forth. The Bible says in Song of Solomon, chapter 5, verse 10, describing King Solomon, it says, my beloved is white and ruddy, the chiefest among 10,000. So right there in Song of Solomon, chapter 5, verse 10, it describes Solomon as being white. Okay, it describes him as being light in complexion there. Okay, well, you're going to have a problem with these next few slides that I'm, <laughs> I don't want to tell you. Here's the problem with what he just did. Okay, he read you Songs of Solomon, chapter 5, verse 10. But why didn't he start from Songs of Solomon chapter 1? Let's see what that says. Songs of Solomon chapter 1, verse 1. The Song of Songs, which is Solomon's. Now, I have to stop right here because there's this doctrine floating around that, the, that some black woman was writing love poems and love songs to Solomon. That is a lie. That is not true. The Song of Songs, which is Solomon's, is letting you know that Solomon wrote this. Not some black woman wrote this to Solomon. That is a lie. Let's prove it real quick to the right of your screen. First Kings chapter 4, verses 30 to 32. And Solomon's wisdom excelled the wisdom of all the children of the East Country and all the wisdom of Egypt. For he was wiser than all men, than Ethan the Ezraite and Heman and Chalcol, and Darda, the sons of Mahal, and his fame was in all nations round about him. And he spoke 3,000 proverbs, and his songs were a thousand and five. So Solomon wrote songs. That's what you're reading in the songs of Solomon. Just like it says, he, he spake 3,000 Proverbs. Are you going to tell me Solomon didn't write Proverbs? Of course he wrote Proverbs. He also wrote the Songs of Solomon. So back to Songs of Solomon, chapter 1, verse 1. The Song of Songs, which is Solomon's. This is Solomon speaking. Going down to verse 5. I am black. Wait a minute. Why didn't he read that? Why did he start from Songs of Solomon, chapter 5? Well, we're clearly seeing in chapter 1, verse 5, Solomon is saying he's black. I am black, but comely. O ye daughters of Jerusalem, 
as the tents of Kedar. I'm going to deal with that next. As the tents of Kedar, as the curtains of Solomon. Verse number six, look not upon me because I am black. So now we're seeing here in Souls of Solomon, chapter one, verse five, Solomon says he's black. In Souls of Solomon, chapter one, verse six, he reiterates that he's black. But this guy did not even read these in the video. He skipped straight to Souls of Solomon chapter 5, verse 10. Why? Because he is a deceiver. That's why. Furthermore, furthermore, in verse 5, Solomon says, as the tents of Kedar. So now we have to get some understanding on that. Who was Kedar? Let's First find out. Chronicles chapter 1, verse 28. The sons of Abraham, Isaac, and Ishmael. Verse 29, these are their generations, the firstborn of Ishmael, Nebaioth, then Kedar, and, Abd and Adbil, and Mibsam. And if you notice, I have Kedar highlighted. So I wanted to know about this Kedar, because we just saw that in Psalms of Solomon chapter 1, verse 5, as you can see above. It says, as the tents of Kedar. Now we know who Kedar was. Kedar was one of the sons of Ishmael. So I went and I looked this thing up. And I went to the Blue Letter Bible, right? And let's read it, what it says. It says, the King James Version, the KJV, translates Strong's H6938 in the following manner. Kedar, 12 times. Outline of biblical usage. Kedar equals dark. A, a son of Ishmael. B, the descendants of Kedar. Let's keep reading. Strong's definition. Kedar. From H. 6937, dusky of the skin or the tent, Kedar, a son of Ishmael, also collectively Bedouin, Be uh, Bedouin mm -hmm, as his descendants or representatives, Kedar. Then we go to Genesis, uh, Jesenius, the Jesenius Hebrew Chaldee lexicon. They tell you Kedar means black skin or black skinned man. And that's what that name means. It means black skinned man. So when Solomon in Psalms of Solomon chapter one, verse five, he says, I am black, but comely, O ye daughters of Jerusalem, as the tents of Kedar. Kedar means black skinned man. So he was calling himself a black skinned man. That's the understanding. Why didn't this guy go into this stuff? He jumped straight to Souls of Solomon chapter five. Verse 10, which when you understand that, when Solomon said he was white, he was talking about as far as pu being pure. It's talking about purity. That's what it's talking about. It has nothing to do with how he looked because he clearly told you in chapter one that he's a dark skinned man. I'm black. This is clear. All right, let's move on. Now, let's get back to that history stuff that he said that we'd be making up, right? When you look, and I did a Google search and I took a screenshot because I wanted you to see it. King Solomon being depicted in Volgoda, Russia. This is the Russian icons. And if you look right here, you see King Solomon being depicted as being what? Was he looking white like Pastor Anderson said? Or was he looking black like we just read in Souls of Solomon chapter 1 verse 5? In Russia, the ancient icons depicted Solomon depict him as being black. Let's get a closer look. Why didn't the Russian artist paint him white? Why didn't they paint this guy white? He has woolly hair too, an afro too. Remember you said that Solomon is a direct uh, is a direct progenitor of Jesus? Jesus is a direct descendant of Solomon? Well, yeah. I guess Jesus had hair like wool because Solomon had hair like wool. Hello? Hello? And the Russians painted him as being black. What you going to do with this? And how long ago was this? This picture was painted before there was ever such a thing as a black Hebrew Israelite. But I thought we were the ones that turned Christ black. What are you going to do with all this information? And I'm only scratching the surface. I'm only playing with you. Like, for real, the information that we have, I could bury you, man. And guess what else they did in Russia? They depicted his father, King David, as being black, too. See that? This is King David. There's a book put together called the icon, mainly dealing with the Russian icons by a so-called Jew, a so-called white Jew named Kurt Weitzman. And he compiled a lot of those images and put it in his book. And this image right here is of King David. 
He don't look light skinned to me. Look at his hands. <laughs> and he got woolly hair too. <laughs> hey, see this book right here? This book is kryptonite to people who think black Israelites make up history. This book is called The Annunciation Cathedral of the Moscow Kremlin. Yeah, I do have it. Yes. <laughs> I do have it. Okay. When you go in there, you see a lot of the ancient icons, which were eventually whitewashed. Look at this stuff. This image right here is in that book. This is Christ enthroned. They lightened it up. This is an image of the crucifixion. Everybody in here is black. Everybody. This is Christ right here. <laughs> Look at this. Now, what's the purpose of whitewashing these images since according to this pastor, they was always white. I don't get it. You just, you, you man. <laughs> Look at this. Look at that. To the left and to the right. Look at that. When you look at the right hand side of your screen, this is from the Council of Nicaea, the Nicaean Council. Everybody in the image to the left is black. So what did you do? You went and you lightened everybody up. This is iconoclasm. This is what it's all about right here in your face. And all these images are thousands of years before there was ever such a thing as a black Hebrew Israelite. <laughs> now, hey, check this out. This is also in that book called The Annunciation Cathedral of the Moscow Kremlin. To your left, that's the image of Constantine and his mother, St. Helen. And to the right, that's the image that comes out of the Greek Orthodox Church. But only one of them could be right. Look how dark St. Helen is. Look how dark she is. That wasn't painted by a black Hebrew Israelite. That book, The Annunciation Cathedral, was not put together by a black Hebrew Israelite. It was put together by white people that trade books amongst each other and didn't think that we would find this stuff out. But we did. Sorry. And what about St. Veronica's Veil? You ever heard of that? All these images right here are of Cesare Borgia, Caesar Borgias. But hiding amongst them right up here in the upper hand corner, you have a picture of Veronica's Veil and on the image is Christ being black. And this is from the 1200s. This image right here is from the 1200s. Again, before there was ever such a thing in America as a black Hebrew Israelite. Christ was depicted on Veronica's veil, St. Veronica's veil, as being black. Look, two different depictions. You can tell. It's different background, different dress, different everything. So this is by two different artists, okay? And both of them portray Veronica's veil with a black image of Christ. And these images were both painted before there was ever such a thing as a black Hebrew Israelite in America. But I thought history didn't back us up. That's what you said. How they turned Christ into Caesar Borgias, man. When you, when you came into power, this is where the iconoclasm took place. Now you turned them white. Now you turned them white. <laughs> Oh, man, 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 man. Really, there's no need for me to waste any more time on this. I think the video was long enough. I mean, if I was to, I could do a four hour video showing all types of ancient relics and icons depicting the Jews as being black from all over the world. Way before blacks came to America and started came, coming to the realization that they were Israelites. Ancient relics, relics that are hundreds of years old, some thousands of years old. It's easy. So there's no need to really wasting a whole lot of time, you know, doing that, because I think the point has already been made. So I'm going to pretty much end where I started by rereading St. John, chapter eight, verse 32. It says, and ye shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. We know the truth. So we're free. Our minds are freed up now. You know, no one could come and fool us with any of this BS, man. We see the light. We see the light. And the light is the law. The law statutes the commandments for the most high. And Christ came bearing that light. The real Christ. Yeah, I was shy. So with that, I say peace and safety to the nation of Israel. I hope you got something out this video. And again, I'm going to be doing a lot of exclusives exclusively on this channel. Um, I know I rushed through a lot of this stuff. But again, this guy's not wait, you know, worth a lot of my time, man. 
So until next time, I say shalom.